Honesty, passion, experience. It's Timberwolves Explosion, hosted on the sportstuff.com. And now, your host, Paladino Joey. Hello again, Timberwolves fans. Are you ready for the explosion of Timberwolves basketball? I am your host, Paladino Joey, or Joey Awajan. Timberwolves Explosion is available on thesportstuff.com, iTunes, Stitcher, and Double Twist. Great to be back on board once again today. As I accurately predicted in the past three games, the Wolves would go 2-1. and one. Dead on prediction, uh, they're fairly predictable, I would have to say, to, to a point. I mean, I don't know, I just felt good about the Wolves playing against the Magic at home. Heck, we beat them earlier this year, if you can believe that. Uh, as tough as it is to play there, on a, uh, regardless how good the Wolves are, or how bad the Magic are, or whatever you want to say. And then the Nets, I mean, you got to th- think that Carl Anthony Towns is going to respond to his performance last time around in Brooklyn, despite how good Wiggins was in that game. He responded. Uh, it was literally like a reciprocal between Towns and Wiggins in that performance. We'll talk about that very shortly. And, of course, the Cleveland game was, yeah, that was bunk. <clears throat> but it was a team that, uh, yeah, we'll talk about it very shortly when we get to it. Um, want to give a quick shout-out to Dakota Broadcasting and an old friend here on Timberwolves Explosion, Lucas Quayle, who often posted on the Facebook page in the past. I missed him, man. He's from South Dakota. He was from Sioux Falls. He's moved to Aberdeen and got a job with Dakota Broadcasting. They do... They have like two little stations there. Well, I shouldn't say little, but two radio stations there. One's uh, kind of like 70s, 80s, 90s music and, and whatever. You know, that's like the slogan. And the other one is country. Uh, they have a little sports show on there as well, uh, like weekly. And I was a guest on there. So I want to thank Lucas so very much. Brought me on board to talk Wolves and Wild. I'm not sure if they do podcasting because I looked it up on iTunes and such. and I didn't see it. Maybe, Lucas, if you're out there listening right now, you can let me know. Uh, but I just want to say thank you very, very, very much. I had a blast on there. I didn't set the audio up as good as I should have, and the voice was kind of booming too much. So, uh, damn it, I, I was kind of pissed off about that. That's my own fault. I hope they're forgiving of me and will have me on again. Hope that didn't. Hope that wasn't a deal breaker. <laughs> but I enjoyed the hell out of it. Uh, just again, thanks again, South Dakota. Hello, South Dakota. For those of you that may be listening to the show for the first time. Maybe you heard me on Dakota Broadcasting. God bless you. Thank you very much for hopping on board, if in case you have done that. So, let's get to the games. Three to preview. Excuse me, three to review and four to preview this time around. A little bit busier this week. A little bit busier. Let's get let's get to it now. Saturday, January the 28th, the nine-year anniversary of my podcasting career. That's crazy. Nine years? Mm, eight and a half of this show. Okay, enough of my self-indulgence. The Wolves topple the Nets big time, 129-109. to A believable performance. The Nets' defense is not very good. They score a little bit. Brooke Lopez basically is a perfect New Jersey, uh, Brooklyn net. Brook, perfect Brooklyn net. He'll score, but he, can't, but he doesn't rebound for his size, as Charles Barkley would say. If you don't average 10 rebounds a game, you're not doing your job. He's averaging about six or seven ish a game. Um, not good. Uh, solid game though. Nice movement. He's nice, silky smooth. Kind of, you know, kind of a similar offensive game to Carl Anthony Towns. Honestly, quite honestly, kind of a polished inside that those hook, those little hooks and such. Very good at it. Nice movement. But Carl's definitely going to have a better career. And God Almighty, he just dominated the whole game. Uh, ultimately, his field goal percentage not the prettiest thing ever, but still pretty enough. I mean, 15 to 26, that's still really good. I don't know what I'm saying, <laughs> but awesome down low, making those moves, getting around Brooke Lopez, making it look easy, just kind of swinging around him, laying the ball in, some nice dunks, those jump hooks and such, 37-point performance despite being sick. You could tell something wasn't right with him uh, because he wasn't smiling a whole lot. He just looked tired. Four blocks in the game. He overcame it, and he was just uh, just a franchise player in this particular game. Zach Levine, nice little rebound off of some tough performances, and trust me, his hips bothering him. And I'll talk about that in the uh, uh, Orlando game. A little thing I saw in that one that t- tells me he is still hurt. Absolutely, but a nice shooting night. Three of six from downtown. Six of eleven overall. Twenty point performance for Zach Levine. Not bad at all. Very much uh, assuming his role at minimum as the third option on this team. Andrew Wiggins, very solid in the game, but certainly not the performance last time around. Deferred a bit to Carl Anthony Towns, and very understandable. Uh, good, strong game overall by the whole club. I mean, Shabazz Muhammad off the bench, 18 points. Again, attack in the basket, uh, recipient of some nice passes from Rubio, and even from 
Gorgi Zhang and such, just uh, those outlet passes. Gotta love Gorgi Zhang. He's got a little Kevin Love in him now with those outlet passes. They're fantastic. And Clarissa uh, Levine, recipient of one of those in the Orlando game. I'll, I've got something to say about that shortly. It's not too bad. It's just bummer a little bit. Um, but an overall solid performance by the Wolves. Dominating. Nice to see Randy Foy come back, but eh, you barely noticed him. He wasn't very good. Three turnovers in the game to lead the Nets <laughs> in only 16 and a half minutes. Rusty of the crossover podcast, him and uh, P Mac do the uh, co- uh, the crossover podcast, which is also on the sportsstuff.com. They don't release them that often. I'm kind enough to post them on there because I'm like assistant administrator, or whatever. Or well, you know, I'm an administrator, vice president of the sportsstuff.com, un- unofficially, you could say. <laughs> so I post those up there, and uh, there you go. Love, just a, a wonderful show, but I, I feel for him right now. I feel for Rusty. His club's really struggling. They did kick our butts earlier this year, but now they're kind of in a, they're definitely in a frustrating position right now. Um, not sure where to go with them. I mean, they're, they are pretty much starting over. They're, they're going to have to anyway at some point. Um, signing Jeremy Lins of the world is not going to help their team. All these strange players, Sean Kilpatrick, hey, he, he, he played well, but, mm, I don't know. I mean, doesn't look like a very positive direction for that franchise at this stage, but God bless them. Hope for the best in their case. Uh, P Mac, of course, a New York Knicks fan, New York Knicks commentator, also on that show. Very cool show. The New York area, Brooklyn, and the and the New York Brooklyn Nets, New York Knicks. Very very solid show. Do check it out on the the crossover podcast, iTunes, uh, and and others out there. iTunes and Double Twist at a bare minimum. They're probably on Stitcher, too. In fact, I'm pretty damn sure they are. Monday, January the 30th, the Minnesota Timberwolves host the Orlando Magic. Fun little game. Probably should have, probably took a little longer than it needed to. Damn it. (laughs) But the Wolves heavily favored against this club despite having the same record, which is a sign of how this team is progressing in a very positive direction. And after that awful start, Alfred Prayton, I like him. And I mentioned how he is the more... You know, out of this team, there's so many players on the Orlando Magic that probably should be playing somewhere else. You know, and that's not a rip necessarily. They just should be playing somewhere else. Like, they'd be more productive, I think, or they'd be a better fit on a different team, that type of thing. Uh, Serge Ibaka's putting up nice numbers, but I just think he's he was better suited on the Thunder. Uh, Peyton's perfect for them. Vuvicic is, is, should be there. Peyton and Vuvicic should be there. The rest of them, I'm not so sure. I don't know. Uh, Fournier, nice shooter, but he didn't hurt us again. <laughs> Didn't hurt us this time around. Biombo, I think he should be getting more minutes somewhere else. Bismack Biombo, he's kind of miscast with the magic. Um, God bless him, though. Frank Vogel, I think he's a good coach. It's just not the right mix right now. And uh, they're going to have to hope to clean things up a little bit. Andrew Wiggins was the star of this game, but Gorgie Zhang, 14 rebounds. Very solid. Again, beautiful outlet pass. He had three assists in the game total. Carl Anthony Towns had seven assists in the game. Just, again, great chemistry with with Wiggins cutting, including a backdoor late in the game. A beautiful play. Backdoor play. Rubio to Towns to Wiggins. Backdoor, and it kind of helped wrap things up in the overtime period as Carl and Andrew took over in that case. Andrew, very solid in the game. Not the Again, he didn't shoot the best you ever saw. 10 of 21, but that's certainly not the worst. Got to the free throw line, was more aggressive than he's been, but overall a solid week for Andrew Wiggins. Now, the outlet pass to Zach Levine from Gorgi Zhang was, uh, it was revealing. It was a nice pass and a nice strong finish by Zach Levine, but there's a reason he shot three of nine and one of six from downtown. Bad, bad shooting percentage and all that. Only 11 points total. He's still hurt. Yes, breaking news. He's still hurt. And I talked about this on the last show. Uh, He literally, you could tell he was struggling to kind of, you know, how you're trying to jog forward. You're getting back to the other side, you know, to get on defense. And he, he was, he had a red face and he was just, he dropped a F-bomb like, oh, you could just see the pain in his face. And again, the, the mobility, he was like, he was grinding, just trying to get up the court. His hip's still bugging him and it's plain as day. And that hurts you as a basketball player. Yet they played him 43 minutes in this game. Hmm. I don't know. It's like I've been saying, sitting tones down, not, not, not definitely not for punishment, but let the guy heal a little bit. I think they should sit him down a couple games. If it's two to five games, you know what? So be it. Why have him out there struggling? Maybe the injury will nag the entire season that way. Let him heal up. Come back. Maybe he's going to be back to 20, 22 points a game again. Um, I do like the direction of the franchise, though, how they're having Carl kind of being the overall number one scoring option most of the time. You kind of go with the hot hand, too. 
where like if Levine is hot, this or that, Wiggins is hot. But then you have Wiggins as the clutch guy late in the game. Carl's the overall guy during the game. And then Zach, if he's hot, he can be the leading scorer. But overall, kind of Zach is kind of the third guy total when you th- when you put things together. And that's what that's what the conversation has been. The John Krasinski made the same comment earlier this week, and I agree with him. Um, I think it's a good direction, and it's leading to more wins. You're beating teams you're supposed to beat, and occasionally you're beating teams that you're not supposed to beat. Um, I'm liking the direction right now of this franchise in that case. Uh, Rubio, extremely strong. I can't go without saying this. Six of nine from three-point range. Now, keep that number out of your heads. I don't like it very much either, so no, I'm kidding. Some people think it's funny. Eh, you know. I don't know why I'm even mentioning it, but... uh, he did the little Jordan thing where it's like, Jordan for three? Yes! Remember that? Marv Elbert, 92 finals? Here's Jordan for three? Yes! It was like that with uh, Rubio in this one. Six three-pointers. Very fun. Uh, he fouled out in the game, which is kind of crazy. Fouled out late in the game, but an overall wonderful performance from the outside. Gotta like that. Uh, six of his seven shots were three-pointers. And 22 for the game. Eight assists, eight rebounds. Ricky Rubio bringing exactly what this team needs. He even blocked two shots in the game, which is pretty funny. Uh, the elites have blocked two shots. Chris Dunn blocked two shots. You got four blocks out of your point cards. <laughs> four blocks out of your point cards. And again, three for Carl. I was talking about on the Dakota Sports Show. Uh, Dakota Sports. Dakota Sports. No, Dakota Broadcasting. Pardon me. Uh, on the show there, they, uh, I, I was mentioning how I'd like to see a few more blocks from Carl Anthony Towns. Then he really will be like a Robinson. And yeah, he's, he's definitely picked up the blocks this week. He had seven blocks in, the, in these two games anyway. Eleven blocks for the team in the, in the Orlando game here. Just a wonderful performance by the Wolves. Just, whew, I'm very impressed. Now, only three blocks from Orlando. Nice, strong defense. It's getting better. Yes, you give up some points, but... Uh, Still, I mean, this game had to go to overtime thanks to Andrew Wiggins' very clutch shot. Not the best shot you ever saw. He was kind of far away. It was kind of a long two. He was kind of getting double teamed. They were swarming around him, but he still made the shot. Thank you very much for being very clutch. And then the overtime period was easy. But uh, again, thank you, Wiggins. That's the second clutch, very clutch shot by Andrew Wiggins in the past two weeks. But um, overall, the defense of the Wolves, very strong in this game, I have to say. Uh, yes, the shot blocking helps, of course, but I'm just saying, in general, the defense solid, keeping the Magic to under 100 points, and then forcing overtime thanks to Wiggins' tough jumper. Looked like the Wolves might lose this game because Orlando was getting around the Wolves a little bit but later uh, later on there, but luckily, again, was <laughs> putting the clamps down on uh, Alfred Payton, not letting him get close enough to the basket to put up a good shot, and Andrew, very, very solid in this one. But again, I will continue to reiterate that uh, I think Zach Levine needs to sit down a couple games. It's no disrespect at all. It's get healthy. Heal, dude. Heal. Heal. Please heal. H-E-A-L. Not (laughs) H-E-E. I'm not not telling you to do that. Just please heal up, okay? Please get him healed. Wednesday, February the 1st. We start the month of February. (sighs) Off with a 27-point loss. Rut row, yeah, that's a, yeah. Well, you know what? The, uh, yes, the game sucked, and the highlights do not reflect how awful this game was. The highlights do not reflect how awful this game was. Like you watch the highlights and everything, the Wolves looked pretty good in the first half. They were hanging in there, but you can kind of tell they weren't going to win the game. You could just kind of feel it. But then the third quarter happened again. The third quarter, um, the infamous third quarter, and the fourth quarter too. The Cavaliers scored sixty-two points. In the second half, and the Wolves can't even get 40. Um, Wow. Like, you look at that second half, you just just can't believe it. Um, 37 to 62. Uh, Cleveland just dominating. LeBron, the recipient of lots of nice passes, cutting to the basket, and he was also doling out some nice passes, starting some plays, starting a circuit, and you saw Corver hitting threes and such. Good for him. Um, Nice to see Corver starting to kind of sort of get in the mix there. 4 of 7 from the floor for him, 8 of 11 overall. Again, I will say he's not Scottie Pippen or anything, but nice addition to Cleveland. Now, they need to stop complaining and start playing. That's simple. <laughs> yes, uh, Schombert was okay in the game. LeBron was very good. He had 12 assists in the game. Nice passes. Kyrie Irving, 11 assists as well. The transition defense sucked. I mean, when you look at 37 assists 
by Cleveland. That tells you the defense sucked so bad. No transition. They were cutting to the basket, and nobody was cut staying with their man. Guys are getting easy dunks. They're getting open threes, and that pretty much sums it up. It was a pissed-off team who'd been made fun of in the media and had been chirping a bit, too. LeBron had been chirping, complaining, we need this, we need that, we need the shooter, we need the playmaker, we need to get our head out of our ass, whatever it is, and then Charles Barkley's making fun of him and, you know, and all that, and LeBron's making fun of Charles Barkley, like, where's your rings, which is usually the comeback everybody has to say to Charles Barkley. I don't know. I'm going to stay off of Barkley. I don't know. I don't know what to say about it. I, I don't know. <laughs> sometimes I agree with him, sometimes I don't. That type of thing. Um, LeBron and Cleveland look like the best team in the league on this particular night. Um, they look like defending world champions. They look like a team that had been made fun of, been you know, and they were like, okay, you know what? Bleep you. Bleep you, uh, everybody. Bleep you, NBA. Bleep you, TNT. Bleep you, ESPN. Bleep you, publications all over the country. We're still really, we're still like one of the best teams in the league. Yes, we've been struggling. Yes, we're getting made fun of. Yes, we're getting called out. But screw you. We're going to, we're going to kick some ass. And unfortunately, the Wolves were the uh, sacrificial lamb on this particular night. It is what it is. I mean, what what are you going to do? Wiggins was all right. He certainly was not the guy you wanted to see. He did not live up to my 33 point prediction. Carl, very solid in the game, including a couple threes early. But the rest of the way, though, the defense. Not good. The offense of the Wolves, solid. They were, they, they showed up a little bit there. They looked nice, particularly early. Zach looks hurt. And I mean hurt, hurt, hurt. Didn't make a single shot hardly in this game. 0 of 6 from 3. 4 of 18 overall. Sit him down. He's not healthy. He's not healthy. This is not, this is, you know, he's not suddenly 19 years old again. He's, he's hurt. Okay. And I don't think he's a better player than Andrew Wiggins or Colonel Anthony Towns. I do not. Those of you that think he is, well, that's your opinion. I don't see it. But he, he, still, he's better than this, and he's hurt. It's plain as day. Minus 25 for the game. Can't keep up with people. His hip is bothering him. Sit him down. Again, no disrespect. Sit the guy down. This is not smart. Uh, Shabazz Muhammad saw it off the bench, all that. He kind of, in, a, in some ways, replaced Levine a little bit offensively. That's good. 16-point performance. Um, we'll hear from Marcus the Forecaster in a little bit, too, talking about all that. Uh, Jang faced foul trouble early, minimal playing time in this game, only 20 minutes, only two points overall. Not a good game for Gorgi either, unfortunately. That's that's hard for me to say. I mean, that guy's so valuable. But, you know, you're going to have your off nights, you're going to get all early foul trouble, and you're going to lose playing time. It is what it is, ladies and gentlemen. 15 threes made by Cleveland, only seven by the Wolves. You just add all this together. 54% shooting from the floor compared to the Wolves, 43. Again, 37 assists versus 20. Six, which I'm actually surprised the Wolves had 26, thanks to Rubio's 13. Another strong game for Ricky Rubio. You know what? Yeah. I've been on him a bit. I gave him a hard time earlier, but he has adjusted nicely to Tom Thibodeau's offense. Uh, More three-point oriented than what we've had in the past. More of an actual offense. More modern, per se. Um, And I'm not necessarily, again, big on everything being modern, but you got to have a little, you got to adjust a little bit. You can't just say in a certain area where you're like Windows 98 and you can't keep up with anything. That's what the problem was with the Sam Mitchells of the world. Not a whole lot of offensive education per se, and you're getting a little more here. And uh, you're seeing that, but the defense, not good. And, of course, Cleveland living up to the NBA world champions uh, that they are at this stage. So we'll see them back in the finals, probably. (laughs) Probably. I, I don't see anybody in the East knocking them off. Uh, so, wow, I can't believe how good Utah is either. I'm just looking at that, just seeing things in the side here, the side column. Jiminy, Christmas Utah is good right now. Mm. Well, maybe we'll talk about that later. Uh, yeah, it is what it is, man. I mean, they kicked their butts, plain and simple. It was nice to be on ESPN, but did not work out. Again, we, uh, people on Flip's Army out there saying, oh, well, I'm not sure what's going on with Levine. Is he hurt? Or not Not hurt. He was he, he looked nervous before the game. If anything, he's nervous because he's hurt. He's hurting. I, I, I think he aggravated a little bit on that dunk, but I think it already was kind of hurt too. And it seems like it's just kind of getting swept under the rug. I mean, if he's still playing 37 minutes when he's clearly not really that healthy, I don't know. It's some Something's missing here. Somebody's not ta- talking, and they need to start talking. So it is what it is. Okay, let's move on. I've said that enough. Alpha Wolf Award, Carl Anthony Towns. Another very strong performance by Carl 
Anthony Towns during the course of the week. Definitely the best player on the team right now. Nice to see Wiggins being very clutch again. And a solid a solid overall week. 23 points, 23 points, 27 points. Good week for Andrew Wiggins. Thumbs up to that. Um, strong week. You didn't see the weak performances. Um, you know, I can't give Zach Levine the Johnny Flynn Memorial because it's not like I'm. It's not like it's his fault at this point. He, he's hurt. Um, maybe the lack of communication, or we'll just say Zach's hip, Zach's hip, and Zach's communication with the coach is going to get the Johnny Flynn Memorial <laughs> because four of eighteen ain't going to get it done. Man. And of course, the defense isn't going to be good when you have an injured hip. So, combination here. Um, we're not talking sitting him out for a month, but a couple games, maybe two to five games, you know, it's just let it heal a little bit. It's not it's not right. So, common sense, folks, common sense. So, the lack of common sense in general is going to get the Johnny Flynn Memorial for this episode. All right, there it is. Three games reviewed. Fun week for the most part until that gosh darn Cleveland game. That Orlando game was fun. Frustrating at times, but nice clutch, strong finish. And Carl was good all week. So, there it is. We'll shut things down here, come back, preview four games right after this. Hey, uh, Tom, uh, Zach's vacation hours are getting kind of high. He might need to use a couple days here. Hello, hello, hello. Did you miss me? Yep. Segment number two. We're going to preview four games here. Oh, goody. No, not again. Oh, I don't want to. I don't want to play these guys again, man. Remember when going to the Palace was a good thing? Remember when Randy Foy dominated that club? Remember that? Going on the road to Detroit and the, mal- the Malice and the Palace. Okay, not quite the Malice part. The Wolves were Malice because they kicked Detroit's butt. And it happened time and time again, including in the Johnny Flynn era and when in the early days of Rubio and blah, blah. But going to Detroit now since uh, Stan Van Gundy has taken over, uh, it's been, uh, it's not been good. I'm not looking forward to this one. Friday, February the 3rd, happy Friday and happy Ground Dog Day and enjoy the extra couple of weeks of winter. Um, I'm not a huge anti-winter person, but again, Ground Dog, is, it's a myth, whatever. February the 3rd, the Wolves go to Detroit, the Palace. Oh, goody. This has not worked out. Remember New Year's Eve back in 15, 16, you know, New Year's Eve? Yeah, I remember this year in Target Center, December the 9th. You remember that, 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 that abomination as it was? Oh, it was only 27 points, that's all. Detroit beat the Wolves by 27 freaking points in that game. Ugh, screw that crap. Let's get some revenge, huh? Can we get some revenge? <clears throat> Pardon me, is Reggie Jackson mad that the Wolves didn't trade for him? Okay, I don't know. Or, <clears throat> man, I'm losing my mouth here. <laughs> uh... I don't want to play the Pistons. I, I don't think they're gonna. I don't think the Wolves are gonna win this game. I don't. What a bad matchup. Detroit's fighting for that final playoff spot in the Eastern Conference. They're twenty-two and twenty-seven. Oh, good. The Wolves are only a few games behind Portland for the final spot in the West. Hmm. Crazy that that's still going on. And you know what? The way the Wolves have been playing, they deserve to be in the hunt at the very least. You know what in the hunt means? It means you're not in right now, but you might be if you keep it up. Detroit lived just recently. Just manhandled the New Orleans Pelicans, 118-98. to Most recently got beat by Boston, beat by the Miami Heat. Hmm. Remember when beating and beat by the Heat was like, well, big shocker. Now it kind of is. Uh, Sacramento, they've been beaten. They've been struggling a little bit, but then they crushed New Orleans recently. Hmm. Andre Drummond, the double-double guy, double-double Drummond, or double-double Drummond, you could call him. Triple D. Is kicking some ass right now, obviously, like he always is. Uh... I don't know. I, I don't like this matchup at all. Drummond's always kicking our butts. He's averaging about 14 points, 14 rebounds, almost 15 points, really. Contavious Caldwell Pope, the guy who could have been the Wolves, but could, could have been on the Wolves, but we'll take Gorgie and, and uh, Shabazz, I suppose. 40% from the outside, 15 points a game. And, you know, three, three and a half rebounds, three assists. He's a solid player. He gets a few steals as well. That's not bad. And Reggie Jackson, as Hank McCoy calls him. We have fun with that. On the Courtside Podcast. We'll talk about that some more in the uh, fan interaction. Reggie Jackson's having a solid year. And I remember he came back conveniently right when the Wolves are going to play uh, play him. And he played very well in that game. He's one of the better players in Detroit. Should the Wolves give up all that for Reggie Jackson? It's like, eh, probably not right now. Uh, his assist number is not that high. But he's certainly an aggressive offensive player. He attacks the rim. 
bad matchup against the Wolves. That's maybe why the Wolves didn't want him because he's, you know, he's, you know, he plays so well against us. He's a, he's an attractive player. Tobias, Tobias Harris is leading the way just slightly over Reggie Jackson, 16.7 a game. An overall solid player, but certainly no star on this club. Unless you want to say Andre Drummond is with those double doubles. Got a little Ben Wallace in him, minus the shot blocking. Mediocre shot blocker for what he is, but just a stellar defensive player in general. Uh, Almost two steals a game. The rebounding and the scoring, uh, solid overall. Uh, I don't think the Wolves are going to win this game. And it's definitely not any type of... You know, it's it's not trying to be negative, that's for sure. Uh, it's just not a good matchup for me. Uh, Pope, Pope and Levine right now, I, I you know, you got to go with Pope right now because Levine's hurt, you know, and I can't stress it enough. Wiggins, I hope, will play well, but I, I, I don't know what's going to happen. I mean, I'm not just... What an icky game earlier, and again, the, the last couple times Wolves have played the business, it's not been good. I'm not happy about it at all, and oof, it's, it's just... It's not been good. Uh, overall, last time around, Reggie Jackson, solid game. He wasn't that good, but he was strong. Uh, to, to Drummond with two, 22 points, 22 rebounds. Just overall crazy game. It seemed like everybody on the Wolves kind of lost their minutes. Uh, Mr. <clears throat> Mr. Thibodeau got extremely pissed off in this game. And, yeah, uh, all the reserves kind of came in and did a whole lot of nothing after the starters did a whole lot of nothing. Chris Dunn was solid in the game. Last time around, Carl got a double, double, but five turnovers. was very sloppy. The Wolves just were kind of out of it the whole game, and Detroit kind of had their way with the club. I'm, I'm going to pick Detroit in this one. Again, not trying to be negative. It's a matchup. Let's be honest. Let's be analytical. Let's be, you know, objective here. Detroit's going to win the basketball game. Uh, just, you know, not a good matchup. We're going to go with the final score of 108 to 100. It'll be a solid game. The Wolves will be in it. Hopefully, Carl... Can, can man up to uh, Andre Drummond a little better than last time around. It's not like his field goal percentage was bad. It's just something wasn't there. He just didn't see the drive in this game. It's like the Detroit just kind of punched us in the in the mouth, broke a couple teeth, and we kind of got timid after that. Carl needs to respond a bit to Andre Drummond if the Wolves are going to win this game, and that's a huge, huge, huge key. And, of course, you'd like to see something going on from uh, either Zach Levine gets hot and maybe his hips magically healed now. I don't know. I doubt it. Somebody, it's going to take something like a Shabazz Muhammad going crazy or, of course, Andrew Wiggins more or less getting 30-plus points for the Wolves to win this game. And, of course, Carl at least kind of manning up nicely to Andre Drummond and not getting manhandled this time around. And that's not a rip. That's not mocking Carl Anthony Towns. It's, it's just being honest about the situation. That was a bad game, man. It was bad. Memphis Grizzlies next on the docket as we continue to move Right along here, Saturday, February the 4th, back-to-back, coming back to Target Center, a little homestand here. Wow, not a little homestand. That's six games in a row at home for the Wolves. This has got to be about as big as it gets. As the Wolves will start with Memphis, then Miami, then Toronto, New Orleans, Chicago, and Cleveland to wrap things up on February the 14th. How romantic. We get to see LeBron and Andrew Wiggins. Yeah, isn't that romantic? No, Uh, but but hey, you know what? Hey, if if, if both of you... If your wife is okay with going to the Wolves game, you got yourself a good wife. Uh, and Valentine's Day, you got yourself a really nice wife. <laughs> uh, February the 4th. Mm, yes, Wolves host the Memphis Grizzlies. This has been a tough, frustrating matchup again. Um, but, but, I think the Wolves win this one. I, I you know, they were, well, <clears throat> I, I think the Wolves win this one. Of course, the... Memphis Grizzlies both times in Memphis crush. Well, they didn't crush them. The, the second time they did, uh, the Wolves narrowly lost, and Paul Gasol was manhandling Carl Anthony Towns way back at the beginning of the season. And the Wolves crush, destroy a Memphis team that Popovich did. I mean, all their best players were out in that game. I don't know what the coach is doing there, or what the organization is doing. They're a pretty strong team at thirty and twenty-one. And then in Memphis on November the 19th, 93-71, just an obliteration. So the Wolves looking to nod the series up two to two. Wrap things up here with a tie for the season series. And I think the Wolves will win the game. I think they'll have a strong performance. I think you'll see the two teams match up uh, mano a mano this time around at home in Target Center. And I think Carl Anthony Towns will be the key to a victory. Again, the way he manned up to uh, Brooke Lopez after Lopez beat him pretty good last time around. And he struggled the whole game. I see Carl Anthony Towns responding nicely to uh, uh, Marcus Gasol, who, again, has been a bully to Carl so far this year in the two games they played against each other, which, of course, was not on November the 1st. <laughs> I think the Wolves win in, in a narrow, 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 narrow margin. 
something of the likes of the first game. I think the Wolves will win this one 104-100. Carl Anthony Towns will get 30 plus. He's gonna he he might get 40 in this game because I I just see it happening despite how good of a defensive player Marcus Gasol is. I see Carl Anthony Towns coming out to play. I'll say 30. 30. Uh, 40 is too crazy. Um, but I, I see Carl having one of those big ones, like a 30 and 15 type of performance. He'll get some nice, again, some nice uh, <clears throat> help out of Rubio, double-digit assists. You'll see Wiggins with maybe 21 to 25 or something like that, and hopefully Zach Levine, who earlier in this year had played pretty well against the Memphis Grizzlies, will come out and get 20 to 25 along with Wiggins. You'll have a 20-20-20. I do believe all three of them will score 20 in this game. It'll be the first time in this week that the Wolves will do that because I don't I don't know about Zach getting a 20 in Detroit. Uh, last time around, Zach Levine had 31 points. Last time these clubs were in target center, Zach totally led the way, and he has played very well against this Memphis club. Will be a nice little resurgence for him, hopefully. Um, he's still capable of getting the 20 points and such, despite the injured hip, but again, it's just, mm, I don't know, it's bugging me. Third game to preview, the Miami Heat, Monday, February the 6th, so let's get on to that one. No LeBron James, no Dwayne Wade, no much of anything. Gorgon, or excuse me, Goran Dragic, oh goody, he's averaging about 20 points a game. I'm not a big fan of his, and it's no, it's nothing meant any disrespect or anything. I just don't think he's that good. I mean, he's he's okay, but I don't know. I mean, just something about him. It's just not that good to me. I don't know. He, he doesn't seem like a much of a player. Uh, Tassan Whiteside, a guy who emerged out of nowhere a couple of years ago, a second round pick and all that. Marcus, the forecaster, really liked him. He saw something in him in the summer leagues and such, and even pre-draft that year. That was a couple. That was a few years back already. Uh, he's averaging almost 17 points, 14 rebounds a game. He's the best player on that team. He averages so many. I mean, he did so many blocks. He's averaging about two a game right now. But in the, the, he's capable of getting like eight, nine. I mean, he's capable of getting eight on occasion. I mean, he'll really take off. Wayne Rain Ellington, the Timberwolf from back in the day during the Kurt Rambis era. He's a leftover from back then. He's not really making three-pointers to a point you'd like, only about 34%, but he's still averaging about 11 points or so off the bench. Well, he's the sixth man for this club at this stage. You've got all kinds of other players. Justice Winslow, who's I don't think he's living up to what people hoped he would be. Derek Williams is on the Miami Heat. You almost forgot about him. I mean, you've got all these former Wolves, and you got all these former guys that we hoped would be Wolves. Udonis Haslam, who's almost done. I mean, he's averaging about eight minutes a game. You almost forgot about him. Luke Babbitt, former Timberwolves draft pick as well. We ended up trading in the Martel Webster trade and all that. Oh, gritty. Luke Babbitt, who's capable of hitting threes on occasion, but not nothing special. Only averaging about 15 minutes a game and about four and a half points. Just kind of a deep reserve type of guy. Derek Williams, though. Gosh, Derek Williams is going to make a little homecoming and very few people even notice. He's just, he's not... Certainly not anywhere near what people hoped he was going to be in his league. Just one disappointment after another. Derek Williams, six points, three rebounds a game. Mm-hmm. And he's missed quite a few games this year as well, only averaging about 15 minutes off the bench. Crazy. Number two overall pick, I, I, I don't know. He's one of those guys who, you know, he's good at this, he's good at that, but he's not great at anything. Uh, he's just another one of those kind of players. He's not a great rebounder, not a good, not a good defender. Not even that good of a score. Just nothing about Derek Williams really stood out. And damn it, uh, the Wolves missed out on a lot of good players in that draft. Mm. And if only we got number one, we would have taken Kyrie Irving probably. And then we'd, things would have gotten real interesting with Irving and Rubio. But uh, let's just move on from that. Wayne Rain Ellington. Marcus always had called him that. Deion Waiters has been playing very well for the Miami Heat. Another guy, you know, it seems like this team is just filled with cast-offs. It, it really is. Uh, Gorgon, Goran Dragic who was a member of the Suns and, and other clubs over the course of time. He's the leading scorer and all that, but for a team that's not very good, even despite the fact they've been playing really well lately. And I don't know where this came from. They've won five games in a row, beating Brooklyn, Chicago, Detroit. They even beat Detroit, Brooklyn again, and Atlanta. They've been playing very well lately. They've been on a run, and Deion Waiters has been a huge factor, including crushing uh, the Atlanta Hawks very recently. Very surprising on TNT last night. Miami Heat definitely been stepping up despite only they only they only have they're only twenty and thirty despite this nice winning streak. But um, mm, I'm pretty surprised to see that actually. To be quite honest, uh, Luke Babbitt actually started the game. That's funny. Yep, yep. Luke Babbitt started in the game, made half of his threes, this and that. And Hassan Whiteside just dominant performance for him, like he's more than capable of doing. And Dragic was good on TNT last night. But yeah, I mean. Uh, I, I don't know. Um, I, 
I'm going to have to go with, I, I don't know what the way they're playing right now. Despite the fact I don't think they're very good and they're a bunch of cast-offs and such. I don't know why they're playing well, honestly. But I don't know. I, I don't think the Wolves will win the game. It just reeks of one of those games. The Wolves aren't going to come out feeling good about anything. Uh, Wolves in Miami. You know, there's not a much of a sample size at this club because it's just they change so many times. They've changed players so many times. And, of course, the Wolves have not played them yet this year. They'll finish up the little two-game series on March the 17th. Excuse me, St. Patrick's Day. That's kind of cool. Kind of. Kind of cool. Um, with your green beers at the game. Uh, the Wolves will not win the game. I think the uh, Miami Heat will win, believe it or not. Um, the Miami Heat will win on February the 6th. Hazan Whiteside. I mean, it's going to be a cool matchup to see Carl go against him. It'll be fun, but I think Whiteside will get the best of him. Not not because he's a better player, but just, I don't know, they're playing better right now. I don't, again, I don't even know why they're playing well, to be quite honest, other than like Deion Waiters has been on a run and such. And even Dragic has been playing extremely well. I'm having a hard time this one, with this one. I'm like struggling with this. You could probably tell. That's why I'm fumbling all over myself right now because I, I'm surprised they're playing so well. But I'll pick a loss. The Wolves will not win the game. Miami will win 102-98. It'll be very close. It'll be frustrating. Somebody like Dragic will will finish a shot, like get some kind of a roll or Deion Wade or somebody like that. Or watch Wayne Ellington hit a three late in the game like he's done before against the Wolves. Very frustrating in his Memphis days and, and other clubs along the way. Um, you know, I... I don't know. I, I I'm having a hard time with this one. It's a tough. It's a weird match. It's a weird matchup. It's not tough. It's it's tough to predict. I think Wiggins will play well against the Heat. He he's the guy I think is going to have a strong game. I think him and Waiters will kind of have a mano a mano type of thing. At times, they'll be when when Waiters is on him. Tyler Johnson also has been solid for the Heat, but just I'm just going to say the Heat are going to win the game. Whiteside's going to be too much, and Dragic will continue his, his run. He's been making three-point shots, so good for him. Heat win, 102-98. Let's move on. I think I'm dragging this one longer than I need to. It's it's just a weird matchup. Just a strange one. Toronto Raptors is not a strange matchup. They're just a good, solid team. <clears throat> they really are. So you got, I mean, you got DeMar DeRozan. They're still averaging about 27 points a game. Certainly not an anomaly starting out the season. He is that good, believe it or not. Kyle Lowry is a legitimate like starting all-star type of point guard. Uh, DeRozan right now has had a sore so right ankle, but we'll see. We'll just have to wait and see. I'm guessing he'll be back ready to roll again. Uh, they're in second place in their division, believe it or not. 30-20, and 20, they're the opposite of the Miami Heat at this stage. Boston Celtics still leading the way in that division. Very impressive with how well the Celtics have been playing of late. Good, good on them, considering how good Toronto was last year. Uh, DeRozan, though, I mean, this is one of the best backcourts in the league. It's not the best. Yes, I know James. <laughs> James out there. Yep, on Twitter. Uh, <laughs> we had a fun little back and forth on Twitter a little while ago. Jared Sullinger, that guy's like dead man walking, left for dead. You know, he is nothing. He just vanished off the face of the earth. Nice players on this club, but not great overall. <clears throat> You know, you got you got the two you got the backcourt, and then after that, it's a huge drop off. You got two big stars, Kyle Lowry, averaging twenty three points a game. Uh, good defender, strong passer, not the best passer. He's not Rubio level in passing. We'll say Demar Derozan, just a scorcher. Um, certainly, he's not a three point shooter, but he just attacks the net and crushes everybody along the way. He makes his free throws. Good overall shooting percentage and athleticism. But, of course, a sore ankle may hinder him a little bit. Will the Wolves be capable of a surprise little win against Toronto? This matchup has not been good over the years. And the Wolves got crushed by Toronto earlier this season on December the 8th, 124-110. to But they were in the game for a while. And Wiggins played well in the game. I think Wiggins will play well in this game as well. Um, He's not going to face a whole lot of resistance. He's not going to have to go against uh, DeRozan. Well, he probably will go against DeRozan a little bit, actually. It'll be a fun matchup between the two. He will go against him a little bit. In fact, the Wolves may rather have him on DeRozan than when uh, uh, <clears throat> Levine at this stage, but still. Um, I do expect a strong performance from Wiggins in this one. Wiggins and Levine led the way last time, both of 29 and 25. Levine was the one of 29, believe it or not, but he wasn't hurt at the time. I don't like this matchup, but I, I have a sneaky feeling... This is going to be one of those surprise little wins for the Wolves. I got a sneaky feeling, especially if DeRozan is still not right, per se. And they did lose recently to Boston, but of course they're leading the division for a reason. So they're just a little bit better than Toronto right now. 
I'm going to pick a win. I'm going to pick a very close 102-100 win for the Wolves. It's going to be something along those lines. Let's go with, let's change it. Let's go with 112-110. to Very fun game. High scoring. Andrew Wiggins is going to get 33. Carl Anthony Towns is going to get something of the likes of 25 and, and 13. And Levine will get his, uh, Levine will get somewhere around 25 as well. You're going to have a strong performance. And Wiggins will be leading the way for this club. Shabazz Muhammad off the bench will do it. He's 16-ish. He's going to have another strong performance. He'll be a factor in this one. He'll be one of the reasons the Wolves win the game. Getting loose and some of those breakaways and dunking along the way. Helping the Wolves get the job done. And of course, Rubio will definitely get his double-digit assist against Toronto. I, I'm getting a feeling that the Wolves are going to show up for this game. They're going to play very well after a frustrating loss to the Miami Heat. That's just the way I see it. I think the Wolves get beat by Miami. They get mad and they take Toronto down at home. It'll be a very surprising, very delightful victory for the Wolves, which will get the get get this club some more positive national recognition in defeating a very strong Toronto team on, on Wednesday February the 8th. The next game is on Friday, so we're going to put things off for now. <clears throat> That's four games previewed. I think the Wolves go... <clears throat> excuse me. I think the Wolves are going to have a are going to have a decent week. They're going to go 2-2, two and two, lose to Detroit, beat Memphis, lose to Miami, and then beat Toronto. So a 2-2 two and two week, the Wolves will keep that 500 thing going, the 500 train rolling in their march to hopefully end up catching up with the Portland Trailblazers at some point. But I do think it'll be a solid week again for the Wolves. We'll be back right after this for some fan interaction. Joey, uh, I'll try to keep it relatively quick. I just got a few thoughts from this week's games. Um, start with Levine, he's still struggling a lot, uh, not just offensively as well, he's taking a step back on defense, um, especially in that Cavs game. He always seemed to be in the wrong spot and just a step behind the player he was marking. Um, I don't really think benching him is going to help too much. He's just a confidence player, but limiting his minutes a wee bit might be good. Especially if his hip's still giving him a wee bit of trouble. Um, he says it's not, but you never know. Um, yeah, so if we can just limit his minutes a wee bit, keep him in the starting lineup, but then maybe bring in Brandon Rush for a wee bit. He was awesome in that we limited action that we saw him in, but he hasn't been on since. And He shot the ball well, played good hustle defense. I don't know, I don't know why Tibbs wouldn't want to play him. He seems like the sort of player he'd want in his system, but yeah, it'd be good to see Rush get at least. 15 minutes a game that's just me um, another thing that I was pretty stoked to see Ricky Rubio was one of the standouts for the week um, shot the ball really well uh, especially from 3 against the Magic that was incredible no one would have seen that coming um, yeah he's definitely found his stride a wee bit and like those assists as well he's still getting all those got into a bit of foul trouble but Apart from that, you can't really say his play's been anything but awesome, <laughs> I guess. Uh, I still don't think Dunn is close to being a starter, which sort of brings up the question, would you want to trade Rubio now, sell high? This is what I think the highest his um, trade value will get to. Um, we've got yeah, we got Dunn and Tyus on the bench, but... I don't know, Dunn just, just doesn't seem ready to start. He's he's had okay games, but like against the Cavs today, you could just see that he's still really raw and um, lacks a bit of confidence. And I don't know, he still seems to be adjusting to the NBA. He might have hit that r- rookie wall, but I don't know, he's just been inconsistent all season. Uh, some people would say bring Tyus on. He's an awesome offensive player, but imagine watching him playing defense against the likes of Russell Westbrook, CP3, uh, Curry uh, no, it would be a bit of a nightmare just watching them light him up night in night out um, I'm not saying that it would be the end of the world but uh, it would be uh, it'd be an absolute struggle for the team um, so it all really comes down to whether the Wolves think they can make the playoffs this season or not and then if making the playoffs is going to be beneficial to the team I guess 
compared to what they could get in return for Rubio. Getting that playoff experience is going to be pretty important. Like, you don't want to be going to your first playoffs, coming in raw. We've got so many young like players that just any action that they can see in it this year would be awesome heading forward into the future. But at the same time, you don't really just want to be going in, getting thrashed, and then well, swept by the Warriors in four. That's not really going to be too beneficial to anyone. Um, yeah, just want to see what you've got to say about any Rubio trades. Uh, I know you've talked about it a bit, but yeah, it's just a wee different side to it, I guess. Cheers, mate. Uh, have a good one. And that was Tanae out of New Zealand. Did you miss him? I did. I, I missed him a lot. Great to have you back on board with the uh, the, the audio submissions again. Tanae, we're hoping to make this a fairly regular thing, if, if not completely regular type of deal with the show. Um, understand if you, if you can't do it every single show, I mean, because people get busy, maybe whatever it is. But if you're able to, you know, as much as possible, you're welcome on any and every show. So absolutely love the auto submissions. Good takes. For me, Zach Levine, the whole thing comes back to the hip, the hip, the hip. Uh, the defense hasn't been as good. The motion, the shooting, all that. It's the hip. 100%. His hip isn't right. So that's my take on that. Rubio and the trade value, the wholesale high, yes. Yeah. And the crabby part is, is, is done ready. Yes, no, maybe so. It's kind of like that. Doesn't look like it right now. It's kind of a combination of, see, Dunn's defense is good, Tyus's offense is good. So it's kind of like interchangeable. I totally hear you with the Tyus Jones going up against like Steph Curry, Chris Paul, guys like that. That would be, uh, whoo wee. That would be a tough, tough deal. But absolutely love today's takes. Um, that would be, we're still trying to think of a name for it. Uh, yeah, Mad Martin's Mad Takes and Purple Mafia. Today's takes, so it's like, that's like, a basic version we could call it today's takes for the moment and it can kind of be today's something takes so if anybody has any ideas out there vince germano hank mccoy hank mccoy is like a that guy's got a very vast imagination you know like myself that's why we that's why we that's why we're the alpha dogs of the shows you know we, we got our vast imagination but sometimes sometimes mine goes cold and i don't know why it's like you know <laughs> <laughs> you want to rhyme things a little bit like mad martin's mad takes that goes really good it's cool um I'm trying to think. Just it'll it'll come to me one of these days. Like it took a little while with Mad Martin too, a couple of weeks. So, any ideas for anyone out there? You're welcome on board to make ideas. It doesn't mean it'll be the choice, but maybe it is. Maybe you got it. Boom, just like that. Like the guy at work one time, uh, Nick Nyland, wonderful, really cool guy. I worked with years ago when I couldn't figure out a, a name for the Minnesota Wild show, and he's like Brave the Wild, and I'm like, Oh my God, that's that's it. <laughs> so that was cool. Um, Today we go to Twitter now, and today was talking about he'd be happy if uh, Levine skips the skips the dunk contest, and yes, especially with the hip. And we notice how when Levine did that dunk against the Magic, and he came down and then just went did the whole oh, you know did the f bomb, you know, like you know like like he was in in, in a lot of pain there, and then uh, you know just grinding like he was grinding trying to get forward. Hip, 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 <laughs> hip injuries suck. And they last, and they suck. And I hope and pray to God this isn't going to be a lingering thing all season. And the whole talk about sitting him down, I mean literally like he's out of the games for two to five weeks, like two to five weeks, two to five games, pardon me. And hopefully that'll kind of help it mend a bit. Uh, limiting minutes, yes. Like we're, when we're talking like four, when they played Levine for 43 minutes against Orlando and you could tell he was still hurt, what the hell are they doing? And Brandon Rush not even seeing the light of day the old Timberwolves uh, back in the flip days, and God rest his soul, but this was something that was not good. Um, somebody gets hurt, you play Gary Trent, or whoever the name was. Gary Trent was the example, and he's the one who went frontal about it. He got his minutes, he played very well, and then the guy came back, healthy again. I can't remember who it was. It was Wally, or, you know, it wasn't Garnett, obviously. I think it might have been Rosho or something. Somebody like that was out, and Gary Trent got extensive minutes and played well. And then... When they came back, it was like, they say hell with you. And that's what Trent said. You know, they came back and they say hell with you. And he got no minutes. And that was it. Brandon Rush deserves to play. Tyus Jones deserves to play. This whole shortening the bench thing, I understand you want to play the big three. They're the big bucks. They're your meal ticket. But one of the big threes hurt. He's hurt. Hurt. H-E-R-T. Do I have to spell it out? He's hurt. Please. Please, you know. 
at least limit his minutes if you're not going to sit him down a couple of games, you know. And yeah, okay. And uh, let's get to Marcus the Forecaster right now because I'm going to forget. Forecaster with a little differing opinion when it comes to uh, sitting Zach or not in terms of him coming off the bench. Z- uh, Marcus the Forecaster, you could see, you know, he was the former co host. He still could be the co host anytime, and the door is always open. It's just hard to get him on, you know, and, and it's a bummer. And that's where the audio submissions are just a godsend to this show. Oh. Oh, today it's so such a godsend. I mean, I love it. And yeah, it's hard to get people together for a full show. So it's like audio submissions are just oh, they're godsend. You know, I mean, so viable. And it's nice to at least get texts from Marcus onto the show too, because he doesn't have the equipment to do audio submission, or he 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 could from his phone, but I don't think that's his thing. It's one of those deals. Uh, the text from Marcus is put Zach on the bench, move Wiggs to shooting guard, Baz. Should have been given an offer sheet. Trade for Wilson Chandler. Dunn needs to start, draft a center, or defensive power forward. Yes, um, I do think they're going to go with the big man route into the draft if the Wolves do keep their draft pick, if they don't trade the pick away. We talked about that on the Dakota broadcasting, also about possibly trade the pick if need be, package it in a deal for maybe you're going to get a Nerlens Noel or something, and that's a guy I want very badly. If... Say, yeah, I mean, Nerlens Noel is a guy I would like if he came at a good price, say maybe Rubio and a pick or something. Maybe you get Noel and, and another player. Uh, it depends on how much the Sixers are asking for. Do they want Rubio at all? It sounds like they want Tyus Jones, and you're not going to do Tyus for Noel. They, they never do that. Uh, and I would, if you're trading Rubio, I'm not trading Tyus at the time unless you have some other plan coming this direction, like a Brandon Knight, like I've talked about a trillion times. And even on the, the court side, they talked about uh, Joey wants Brandon Knight. And yeah, yeah. I would take Brandon Knight on this club. So that type of deal. Um, Tanae also talking about uh, Levine recovering. Um, yes, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll read the whole thing because I really did not read the whole thing on Twitter. He says, I'll be happy if Levine skips the dunk contest. Use the All-Star break to recover, especially if we still have playoff hope. Yes, and he does need to recover. And maybe that All-Star break will help. And I think... I think he also should sit out a couple games. Like I've said, I'm probably saying it too much. Tanae continues on Twitter saying, just got a new phone, should be able to record something for the next show. And Tanae delivered. Tanae delivered. Yes, sir. Oh, I think, and I thank you very much. He says, sorry, it's been a while. And I was saying thank you so much. And I understand I've missed you. I've missed you, though. Now we have to find out a name for your takes. He says, Levine has been awful in this game. This was in the Cleveland game. He was terrible. If it's not the hip, there's something mental hindering his game. And, you know, it probably is both. You know, the, the mental part, too. See, the hip can generate a mental response. And I apologize. I didn't even click like on the doggone thing. Now they call it like instead of favorites because Twitter's... Yeah, I don't know. It's like Twitter book now and, and face Twitter, you know, and facer. It's like facer and Twitter book right now. That's basically what they're turning into, just like Google and uh, YouTube and uh, New World Order, all this. Okay, enough of this. <laughs> Stop merging together. Just be your own thing, damn it. Okay. <laughs> Injuries can create a mental hindrance. Like when I banged my knee with the bowling ball when I was bowling in the, in the years ago, it... Create, it hurt, obviously, and it created a hitch in my giddy-up, so to speak. It hurt, but then I also had this, uh, what's the word? I got skittish trying to move away from the ball, and I started throwing a lot of gutters, and that's really bad. And a lot, and I started missing on my spares and stuff. So, yes, it's stuff like that. Yes, you get hurt, and then you create, and then there's a mental hindrance going on at the same time. So, yes, I, I, I think it's both today, unfortunately. Um, the injury, I think, created it, and yes, he's not got the same motion on the ball. It could Even if it's off by a fraction of a degree, it's going to miss, probably. It, it's just, it's not the same, and that's what happens. At Wolves Explosion, at Wolves Explosion, I want to thank Tanae, Vince, and Levi, uh, Tanae Brown, Levi Brown, and uh, Vince Germano for sharing this retweeting this on Facebook and Twitter. God bless you guys. I really appreciate it. Hank McCoy for sharing the show on occasion as well on Facebook. Thank you so much. And please do check out the Courtside Podcast. Hank McCoy, Vince Giovato. Vince was making fun of me about... He said I... Uh, this was on a recent show on the Courtside Podcast that I I uh, wasn't big on Kawhi when he... The, years ago when they were doing the top 10 of every position. And I was... He said I was uh, down on him picking Kawhi. Was it 8th or something? Did I really do that? I, I Man, I'm ashamed of... If I did do that, I'm ashamed of myself because I think Kawhi Leonard is the NBA MVP right now. 
Him and LeBron are the top two choices for that award. Uh, James Harden is number three. Well, and maybe he's number one, number two. But I think Kawhi Leonard is the MVP in the league because, well, put it this way, when it's like 31 to, to 11, 31 to 16 or something, every time he plays another star player who's capable of scoring a lot, I think that makes him the best player in the league, honestly. Um, is that, I think he's the best player in the league right now. And be, just, just because of that, I mean, you're dominating your matchup. And I, I know that's not the whole game, but it creates, creates, <laughs> it creates a, a, a struggle for other players on that team. You're shutting down the best player on the team and you're kicking his ass on the other side of the ball when he's trying to guard you. That's the best player in the league for me right now. That's what Michael Jordan used to do. Um, you know, it, just unbelievable. And uh, I'm not going to compare him to Michael Jordan, but my God, he's getting, he is way, way, way beyond anything I imagined. And if I ever really said that, and I'm sorry, I apologize deeply. I, I don't know why I would say that unless there was somebody else he was, that Vince was leaving out that bugged me. That might be the only reason, but boy, I apologize for that wholeheartedly right here, right now in Tim Rule's Explosion. And thank you for approving Tim Rule's Explosion. Hank McCoy and the Courtside Podcast, the alpha dog there with Vince Germano is one of the one of the gems of this world. Just love Vince Germano, you know, <laughs> seriously. Um, yeah, uh, I, I, I apologize right here on Tim Rule's Explosion. Right now. Right here, right now. So take that as is. Maybe you think, yeah, there's Joey manning up or there's Joey <laughs> tail between the legs, whatever it is. Kawhi Leonard is the MVP in the league right now. He is. And it's nice to hear Hank McCoy and Vince Germano agreeing with that. Um, they didn't mention that I said that. They just said he loves him now. And that's it for Facebook. Doggone it. Nobody posted on Facebook this week. Did I scare you away? Joseph Phillips, shout out to you in Australia. God bless that guy, Joseph Phillips. What an awesome guy. Great posts. Always has a lot to say. I hope I didn't scare you away in the last show. You know, I, I like the takes, and I like I, I like what he says, even though I didn't like Donnie Exum. Ah, so what? It's just, you know, so what? It's nothing against anybody. I, I'm just not a big fan of the guy, that's all. But overall, just awesome takes by Tanae, Hank, and all of you. Missed you guy this week. Ho- hope you're back, but Tanae definitely carried the uh, fan interaction. He gets a super-duper gold star, platinum-plated gold star for the show. <laughs> There's a platinum star now, right? No. <laughs> oh, yeah, Hank is like a gold star, man. Like last week, he was so good. Um, you guys, just a wonderful post. Want to appreciate you so much for your involvement with the show. Again, quick shout-out again. I-, I-, I hope he still listens. He, I-, I think he gets behind like I do. Say on my, you know, the retro gaming podcasts. I don't want to say video game podcasts. Retro game podcasts. You put that PlayStation 4 away, that Xbox One, <laughs> Nintendo Switch. What the hell is that? And whip out the NES Classic instead. If you can find the damn thing, for goodness sakes, where that? Why, why does Nintendo have to do that? The demand's off the charts, and they just like they release like 20 of them on the whole planet, and they're boom gone. And then they release 50, boom gone. And then they release 200, gone. You don't even see the damn thing. So. Yeah, that's a mini rant right there. Ugh, the NES Classic. But if you see one, yeah, put that in. Hook that up to your HDMI, which you can do very easy because it is HDMI compatible. God, that's beautiful. Nintendo with HDMI, legitimate deal. Not, not as, I mean, it's not the same as the Homebrew channel on the Wii. It's legitimate. Like, it has the HD look still with the NES graphics. It looks really cool. And the Homebrew channel on the Wii, yes, is fantastic. Don't get me wrong. It's nice to have thousands of games. Okay, come and arrest me now. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> no, you don't need to arrest me. Uh, I own a lot of Nintendo games, so na 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 boo boo. Uh, <laughs> just just easier to have them on on a SD card rather than like all over your house. That's the difference, I guess. Um, <laughs> but no, I to get to the point. I get behind on the the retro game podcasts, like of course, in Televisionaries and Atari Game by Game podcast. Atari 2600 game by game podcast, pardon me, and, and others. You get behind because, you know, they record more and you get behind and you don't keep up. And I think Lucas Quayle may have done that in the past too because it just happens. You know, I record this every week during the season, so it's easy to get behind. But I, I hope he still listens to the show and God bless him. Thank you very much for thinking of me and uh, bringing me to your show on there. I really hope to be back on again and I hope to have better audio. That was my fault and I really hope I didn't, hope that wasn't a deal breaker. If you're listening out there, Lucas, in uh, Aberdeen, South Dakota, I, uh, where he's formerly from Sioux Falls, South Dakota. I love you out there in South Dakota. I love your state. I like the uh, western side better because lower dew point. <laughs> Rapid City is the winner. If I'm to pick one city in South Dakota, it's Rapid City. 
Mount Rushmore looks very cool. And of course, I know it's just you can only stare at it so long. But the the climate there, lower dew point, and and just nice and just nice. It's sunnier there. It's just so nice. Oh, I I love that drier climate. So shout out to you over there in South Dakota. Thank you very much for coming to the show and and. Lucas Quayle, we we go back at least to 2010, State of the Timberwolves 2010, when he named Kevin Love the MVP of the team before any of us, and Lucas Quayle, great basketball mind, still a very young guy in his 20s, but to think that he was around that long, and I didn't even mention it on the show, but I, but I figured they were stretched for their uh, stretched for time and everything, I wanted to be careful, and Lucas, man, you've been around this show for gosh, that's almost, you know, almost seven years at least, if not eight years or longer, God bless you. Again, thank you so much for thinking of me and bringing me on the Dakota Broadcasting there. God bless you. And again, I hope to be on again with uh, better audio. My bad there. Really my bad. My freaking bad. Thank you guys so much. Uh, Hank McCoy, Vince Germano, Brett Walters, locally here. Uh, you guys are great. You know, Joe Phillips. So many more. Dan Mays posted on here. Uh... Philip Brown, a uh, New York Knicks fan. His son is a Wolves fan. Nigel Southern, the the legendary, <laughs> legendary first Australian to ever listen to the show. Thank you so very much for many years. And I know we, we got negative in the at times. Me and Marcus, and mostly Marcus, I swear he would kind of get on the negative and he'd stay on it. It seems like he has a little bit of that in him where when he's frustrated about something, he just kind of wants to go on and on about it. So we do apologize for that. Hopefully he listens again now after. A little, I think he got frustrated with our negativity at times, maybe because the show would drag on and on and on about that. So, again, we apologize for that. But to, to go all the way back to 09, we thank you so much, Nigel Southern. God bless you very much. Um, I want to thank you guys so much for so many years of loyalty to this show. And I want to thank you again. I know I'm running a little bit long here because, I, you know, there was nobody on here and I'm giving the bat signal. Nigel Southern, come back. Jules Posterito, come back, please. Hank McCoy, Vince Germano, I know you guys are going to come back, but please do anyway. Please do. Uh, Joe Phillips, absolutely. Please come back. Brett Walters, you know, love, love the takes. James out of New York. How cool is that? You know, New York out there. Very cool guy on Twitter there. It's awesome to think that a New Yorker listens to this show. Um, haven't missed a courtside podcast since I first started listening back in the spring of 2012, and I never will miss a courtside ever. Uh, of course, um, and of course, the uh, crossover podcast as well. I mean, I, I never miss that one. They don't release that many either, so it's easy to not miss a show. But you got to release more often, guys. Come on now. Of course, those are the first. That's the first Australian show I ever listened to. Believe it or not, uh, all the way back to 08, the crossover podcast. Yep. <laughs> but no, Hank McCoy, Vince Germano, just gems. A great show. The best show. Man, I just love you guys. Um, miss miss all of you this week. Please do give a positive rating on iTunes or Stitcher for the show. It'd be greatly appreciated. And I guess we'll wrap things up with that. Thank you again so much. And we'll talk to you next week.